painting next to me is called The Water Splash, and it was painted by Henry Herbert Latang in about 1899, so right at the end of the 19th century. And Water Splash is really another word for a ford. And it's a painting of a young boy driving a herd of geese to market. Um, and it was actually voted the most popular picture in our collection um, some years back when we invited people to, to place their votes. And I can under totally understand why people love it so much because uh, it's a lovely rural um, scene with dappled sunlight. And of course the geese, um, there's got, the picture's got this amazing sort of tunnel-like perspective where the geese are sort of coming right out of the bottom of the picture almost at your feet. In terms of sort of traditional painting, I think what maybe people don't realize on first uh, inspection is that this picture turns all the rules upside down because normally the picture like this, the human subject is the primary interest and the animals are the secondary interest. Here we've got the animals in center stage, literally. And the human element is not only right at the back, He's shrouded in shadow as well, you know, so he's relegated in very much into an inferior position. But this guy, Henry Herbert Latang, was one of a generation of artists who did just this, who overturned the rules. And um, he grew up in Bradford in Yorkshire and uh, went to art school in London, uh, very talented. And then, but the, in that era, the sort of 18, early, late 70s, early 1880s, artists in Britain were just starting to be aware of what was happening in France. Um, and they would, uh, they would continue their, they would finish up their studies in London or Bradford or wherever, and then they would move to Paris. And they would join one of the painting studios uh, in, this, in the capital city, because Paris was the place to go. It was the capital of the art world. Uh, and if you wanted to further your education, that was where you had to go. And um, of course, once he got there, um, the, the, the kind of normal routine was that you would do kind of quite traditional studies under the tutelage of, you know, one, uh, one of the recognized artists. But then you had free time, you had weekends and you had holidays and you went out into the countryside. And if you were Henry Herbert, what you did was you took your, student, your, you took your easel with you and you set it up in the landscape and you started painting outdoor studies of nature. And um, it wasn't, they didn't quite latch on to Impressionism, but the artist that they were all in awe of was a French painter called Jules Bastien Lepage. And he took monstrous canvases out into the open air um, and would uh, paint peasant scenes of peasant life in minute detail, but really realistically. He didn't glamorize them. It had all the filth there, all the dirt. So he, he did not romanticize uh, the really hard graft that these peasants had to endure. And uh, for English painters, witnessing that uh, in the Paris exhibitions was just amazing. And they, wanted, they thought this guy, no, they'd never seen anything like it before. They wanted to emulate him. So they did exactly that. It wasn't what their teachers wanted them to do, but it, was, it became much more important to them to, to, to do the kind of non-traditional thing. And they took that knowledge with them back to Britain when they finished their studies in Paris. And in fact, Henry Herbert, he had become so uh, wrapped up in that sort of rural capsule that uh, there's an element of nostalgia uh, in his work. And uh, of course, that's later than what's going on in our picture. So if we wind the clock back a bit for a minute, just to our picture, it was, as I say, it was painted around 1899, but in 1900, something unprecedented happened. It was actually accepted for exhibition at the Royal Academy. Now, for 15 years, the Royal Academy had been very snooty about these painters in France, these English painters going to France, painting improper subjects. Peasant life, all the Victorians didn't want to know about peasant life unless it was glossed over, romanticized, and, uh, but you certainly didn't ever want to show it as, a, as it really was. 
So, so, but by 1900, the tide was finally beginning to turn and the Royal Academy was at last waking up to the fact that actually these painters were doing something quite interesting. And what, but, but until that moment, one of the things they hated the most was the fact that you could actually, in this painting, see the brush strokes quite visibly in, uh, in the way the picture was constructed. Because um, the Victorians expected their most loved artists to paint almost as if the brush um, was invisible. It was not, it was not a tool uh, that should have left a mark on the canvas. You smoothed over all the rough edges, but it, uh, what this was known as, uh, this type of work was broken, it was called broken brushwork. Uh, as I say, it wasn't until 1900 that the tide finally began to turn in favor of what these guys, these young guys were doing. So, so it's a very, very innovative picture for its time. Also very important uh, in the fact that it would have helped to change perceptions in favor of this type of work. And then uh, the, how this picture came into our collection was uh, the fact that it was, it was given to us in 1954 um, by a lady called Alice Dorothea Henderson. And she gave us a lot of important, very important paintings, some of the most important that we have. Uh, in, that, uh, in that year, and she was a local lady. Um, and she was one of a tradition of uh, female, I think, um, uh, altruistic society ladies. Some of them were artists as well, who, uh, who presented the gallery with gifts. And actually we were founded um, by the bequest of one of these uh, eminent ladies. So, um, so we owe a lot to our female benefactors. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like or add a comment. I look forward to seeing you next time.